Welcome to the Pulmonary Rehabilitation Education Sessions. This is a series of educational sessions on how to manage your condition. We'll be covering five topics. These include managing a flare-up, managing breathlessness, mental well-being, the benefits of activity and medication for your lungs. During this first session, we will discuss how to manage a flare-up. This is also known as, or referred to, as an exacerbation. So let's explain what an exacerbation is. This is when your symptoms feel worse than normal. Your symptoms might be a cough, or sputum, or breathlessness. And we'll discuss these symptoms in a couple of slides time. There are a few common triggers that might cause an exacerbation or a flare-up. These could include an infection, and it could be a viral infection, such as a cold, or it might be a bacterial infection. Air pollution can also make your symptoms worse, and changes in weather, and that can vary from person to person. Some people find that they get worse in icy cold weather. If this is the case, then wearing something over your mouth, such as a scarf, might help to warm the air as you breathe it in. Other people get worse in very hot weather. And on occasions, you might not be able to put the flare up down to one particular thing. It just happens. So how do you know if you're having an exacerbation? Well, we talked earlier that an exacerbation or a flare-up is a change in your usual symptoms. And this might include two or more of the following. You may become more short of breath. This could be more breathless at rest, or it might be more breathless when you're doing your usual activities. And it might take you longer to recover your breath and calm your breathing down. Your cough might become more frequent or it might be a new cough that you develop. This can be a dry, irritating cough. Your phlegm can sometimes be a bit too thick, so your cough can be quite dry. Or you might start coughing up more mucus and your cough might be productive. You might notice changes in your phlegm or your sputum. So it might change colour and become darker a brown or a dark green. There could be more of it or it might be harder to clear. Some people even report a strange taste or a smell to the mucus that they're coughing up when they're having an exacerbation. Other things to look out for which may indicate signs of an exacerbation is that your chest might feel a little bit tighter in your lungs. You might hear a wheeze as you're breathing. And this might mean that you're taking your reliever inhaler more often to help to reduce that tightness in your chest. You might lose your appetite for a few days, not eat as much. You might feel generally lethargic or less energy or a bit more tired than normal. If you're feeling like this, you'll notice that you can't do as much around the house or as much of your usual activities. You may also find that you're unable to sleep in your usual position. You might want to sleep more upright, sleeping with more pillows or sleeping in a chair. If you feel that you're having a flare-up, there are some things that you can do to help yourself. You can increase the use of your reliever and you can use this up to eight times a day. If you have an aero chamber or a volumatic that you can use your inhaler with, then make sure you use that as this will hold the dose so that you can take more of your inhaler in between breaths. You should make sure that you contact a health professional that is involved in your management, such as your doctor or a nurse. If you have emergency antibiotics or steroids, 
and you've been advised on when to take these, then you can always start to take your medication. If you're able to get a sputum sample to your GP, then that might also be helpful to determine if there's a bug in your phlegm and if the antibiotics that you're taking are the right ones for you. Make sure that you prioritise your tasks. You need to allow your body time to rest. So think about what jobs need to be done and prioritise them. Or ask a family member or a friend to help out. Other things that you can do to help yourself is to make sure that you keep your energy levels up and you need to make sure that you're taking on board some nutrition. If you're too breathless to chew and swallow, then eating softer foods such as soups or jellies can help. Using cream in mashed potatoes or using full fat milk will help to get some nutrients in. Make sure that you're drinking plenty of fluids. If you're dehydrated, your phlegm can become a bit stickier and harder to clear. If you think that your mouth is dry, then you need to take more fluids on board. Try to get eight drinks in a day. You may have been taught a technique known as the active cycle of breathing technique in the past by a physio. This technique is a series of relaxed and large breaths followed by huffs. This cycle helps to move secretions through your lungs so it's easier to clear them out. If you have mucus on your lungs, the more mucus you can clear, then the more air we can get through your lungs. The other thing is trying not to panic. Sometimes when people get anxious or worried, they may begin to take smaller, shallower breaths. This can make you feel more breathless. Managing your breathing and tips to help with that will be discussed more in our Managing Breathlessness Education package. There are times when some of these tips won't help and you'll need to be calling 999. Times when you should consider ringing for an ambulance or when you're extremely breathless and your inhalers don't seem to be helping or if you have chest pain that isn't eased by taking painkillers. If you or your family notice that your lips are going darker or changing to a slightly bluer colour, then again you need to be thinking about ringing for an ambulance. If you or your family notice that you're becoming more agitated or perhaps you're feeling more sleepy, or if there's a new confusion or you're feeling a little bit more muddled then you should be ringing an ambulance. If you're unable to cope and manage any personal or domestic tasks at home because of your breathlessness then you probably best go into hospital where they can assess you for any care that might be needed at home to support you whilst you're this breathless. You can reduce the frequency of flare-ups by following some simple lifestyle changes. Stop smoking. There are some little hairs on your lungs that help to brush and clear the lungs of any excess phlegm. Cigarettes stop these little hairs from working well. This is why overnight when you aren't smoking, these little hairs have a good clean-up of your lungs and you often cough more in the morning. Smoking will also affect the cells in your lungs to reduce the air flowing through them. Another thing to try and prevent the frequency is to keep a healthy weight and a healthy diet. If you are overweight, the stomach, which sits underneath the lungs, may stop the lungs from fully expanding. It's also more tiring walking whilst carrying extra weight. But you must also make sure that you don't become underweight as you need reserve energy and nutrition to help to stay active and also to fight infections. As we mentioned earlier, you need to make sure you drink plenty of fluids. Generally on a day-to-day -day basis, you should try and have eight drinks a day. This will help to keep any mucus loose and mobilizing through your lungs. 
You should also make sure that you take your inhalers as prescribed. Hopefully a nurse or a doctor should have checked your technique to make sure that it's good and that you're able to inhale all of the delivered dose. You need to make sure you're still compliant for other medications as well, keeping a balance on how many you have left so that you don't run out. Trying to plan ahead for bank holidays or when you might go away. We do talk a little bit more about medication in our fifth session, medication for the lungs. Other ways to try and prevent exacerbations is make sure that you get your annual flu vaccine. This will offer some protection against that common strain of flu for that year. That said, it's still helpful to avoid family or friends who might be showing signs or symptoms of a cold. Make sure that you're looking out for early signs that you might be becoming stressed or anxious or maybe a bit low. All of these emotional strains can impact the way that we breathe and also our immune response. We'll be discussing this in a bit more detail in our third topic on mental well-being. There has been a lot of research and a lot of studies into the benefits of activity on lung conditions. For chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, the results show a lot of benefits for increasing walking distances, reducing breathlessness and reducing admissions to hospital and many more. So completing the exercise programme will definitely offer some benefit to the management of your condition. We hope that you found this session on managing a flare-up helpful. In our next educational topic, we will be discussing tips to help to control breathlessness.